Hazy sun and hotter on Friday. Good Thursday night, East Tennessee. David Aldridge, Captain Accurate here from the Captain Accurate Weather Command Center. Well, we're going to get more of this. What is this? Hazy sunshine. You know when the sun's just beating down and it's gradually getting hotter, gradually getting more humid, and where the feels like temperature will be in the triple digits. It won't take long. In the next couple of days, when you see the seven day, it may surprise you. The almanac coming in just as expected. We hit 91 degrees today. I was expecting a low of 66, but we hit 64. I was within two degrees for the morning low, but spot on for the high temperature that occurred at 510. Now that put us two degrees above normal. Record high going back to the 1800s of 99 degrees. We saw 93 though. To be fair, in Oak Ridge, while it was only 86 in Kingston and Greenville, and 90 in Sevierville and Athens. That gives you a sample. While some of us were in the 80s, some were in the low 90s in the Valley. They saw a high of 95 today in Chattanooga, 90 in Johnson City, the Tri-Cities, and our friends in Memphis hitting 92 this afternoon. Charlotte hit 95 degrees. Now let's take a look at the ultimate Doppler radar presented by your local Marco's Pizza. Nothing to see here. Maybe a little bit of ground clutter, a little green spots around the radar site, but it's quiet. It will continue to be quiet tonight. But if you're hungry for a snack, may I suggest Marcos.com. A late night snack, always fun. Hardin Valley Farragut, Maryville Fountain City, Halls, Oak Ridge, Middlebrook Pike, and Ebenezer Road. Maybe you'd be in the mood for a pepperoni magnifico. Under $10 for a limited time. They also have a great pozzoli, which is like a great snack. It could fill you up pretty quickly. This sausage, the pepperoni and sausage is my favorite. That's for less than $6 for a limited time at Marcos.com. By the way, the radar shows a few showers in southern Illinois. That's not an added here. Got a couple of showers south of Chicago and back toward what looks like Michigan, widely scattered. That's not coming here either. And there's more heat concerns out west, but Houston has a heat advisory. A couple of thunderstorms, maybe uh, more activity east of Florida, which we'll talk about here momentarily. But you can see the lightning strikes, quite a few here, over 26,000. It's the areas in purple, fuchsia, if you will. Uh, Clark County, Nevada, that's Vegas. I mean, you're talking heat indices, or at least actual temperatures, in the, uh, the 100 and teens, like 118, 122, something crazy like that. But it is very hot out west. Relatively speaking, it could be worse. Now, the drought monitor came out today from NOAA. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration uh, has highlighted more color, sadly. We have now level one in yellow, level two in brown, and level three in orange. The orange is a severe drought. The level th There's only five levels. So if you're a severe drought, you're in Crossville, you're in Wartburg, Harriman, Decatur. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit tighter. We're, just, we're now adding an abnormally dry area for Seymour and Kodak and Sevierville, Newport and Cosby. Even Knoxville proper is now under a drought. Uh, even though it's level one, it could get worse and will likely get worse because I don't see much rain in the picture uh, for another six or seven days. It's going to be tough. Uh, Northern Knox County, moderate drought. That's the light brown that includes Norris, Maynardville, all of Union County, Tazewell, Claiborne County, and Rutledge too. We can add uh, Bryceville. We can add Clinton and Caraville and La Follette under the moderate drought. And then the orange areas, forget about it, it's really bad. Rockwood, Fairfield Glade, Crab Orchard, Wartburg. And if these go up another category or two, uh, it's going to get bad. It's going to get much worse before it gets better because it's going to be dealing with more uh, heat and humidity as we approach the triple digit mark by early next week. That's my expectation. Now, it's not as bad if they're in Jackson, Tennessee or Clarksville. Uh, there's no such thing as a drought in Bowling Green, but boy, we've got it bad in Middle and East Tennessee. And there's even some red areas in the Carolinas, mainly South Carolina, and also in parts of Texas and New Mexico. So that is the drought monitor as a whole. It, it, it does come out every Thursday morning. Headlines, hazy sun and hotter on Friday. Very hot to end the week. Very hot early next week. Now, if you watch me regularly, you say, those are the same headlines you had last night. Yeah, because it's the same message. And if your uh, repetition is the mother of learning, you're going to learn it's going to be really bad, really hot as we head into Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. I think Monday could very well be the hottest day, but Tuesday could be just as close. Maybe a half a degree or degree cooler on Tuesday. Not much difference. Now, you'll notice very closely some of the clouds look like they're trying to converge. I have a partly to mostly cloudy sky overnight tonight, so there may be a few extra clouds to try to squeeze in here. But it's interesting to note the only patch as of 8 o'clock tonight, there was a 10% chance east of Florida. Forget about it. They took it off. What's going on there? 
and we have a little patch of, of uh, yellow, uh, about 20%, in the Pacific, uh, west of Mexico. But really, it's kind of nice to see that there's no more concern for tropical weather, although some of us are cheering on the idea. Hey, bring it on. Let's, let's bring in some rain. But it's only going to hug the coast. So it may not even have any chance now of becoming uh, the next named storm, which would be Debbie, by the way. If your name happens to be Debbie and you're at the water cooler at work, uh, don't be surprised if they're talking about you, but they're not talking about you because you could be the next hurricane on the list or maybe a tropical storm. But it's certainly not going to happen in the next few days because the next seven days looks pretty quiet from the Hurricane Center's perspective. Hurricane season does, in fact, ramp up in August and September, usually peaks around Labor Day, which is why you can usually get a good deal on a cruise or a cabin or at the beach, right? Right around Labor Day. So why, why is it so cheap? Because it's usually very active with tropical weather and you deal with more clouds and rain. Uh, amazing how that usually happens at that time of year. Storm Prediction Center highlighting some color. How about some dark green and yellow? No, there's no yellow here for Friday. Friday, it's just mainly across North Dakota, South Dakota, and back toward Rapid City and into Nebraska for some isolated severe storms. I don't have any rain here. I don't even have thunder. But the closest area that could get some thunder tomorrow would be the Nashville Music City area. Nothing going on here tomorrow. Now, the active weather. The severe weather may grow in Minneapolis, St. Paul on Saturday, up towards Chicago where it could be isolated, but clearly a closer inspection puts it really over Fargo and uh, Duluth and Bismarck, North Dakota, for some scattered severe storms. May see some activity in Sioux Falls. Milwaukee might get an isolated severe storm, as could Chicago. But again, no hope for rain on Saturday, in my view, as we keep it dry right through the weekend. So let's talk about the future cast. Uh, is it any wonder that if you had plans to go to the beach, that they may get more clouds, more passing showers around Virginia Beach or, or maybe Wrightsville Beach because we have a slow moving low that's stalling across the Carolinas. And it's not going to be a picture perfect day at the beach on to Friday, Friday night, where rain still expected around Wrightsville Beach and Myrtle Beach because that's where the low is. While we just uh, wait and count the hours of how much longer can it stay dry. Uh, rain is not going to be around here for a long time. In fact, our best chance will come in, I think, Wednesday into Thursday of next week. So that truly is six, seven days away from the time of this, this video. And high pressure will be our fair weather friend, but it's also going to allow temperatures to soar heading into Monday afternoon. I got Monday's high around 100 degrees. Future visibility. Uh, is it going to be bad in the morning? Well, maybe up toward Kentucky where it suggests some patches of fog there around Monticello, around Corbin, uh, maybe around Jellico, and maybe some patches of fog in the foothills and Smokies. That's the way things are at least trending at this hour. So let's get to the forecast because what's most important as you prepare for tonight, uh, it's not going to be terribly humid. It will be warm and it will be partly cloudy, giving way to maybe mostly cloudy skies overnight, but lows around 68 degrees. That's seasonably cool. Normal low is 69 to be precise. 64 for a low in Crossville, I think is reasonable to expect. 62 for Middlesbrough, patches of fog there, and 66 for our friends in Hamblin County in Morristown. Here's your forecast for tomorrow. That's a five degree jump at 96, a five degree jump hotter than today, uh, and just about nine degrees warmer than it was yesterday because yesterday was 87. So this warming trend just keeps on coming. Winds are going to be out of the northeast in the morning and maybe which every which direction variable for the rest of the day, three to eight miles per hour. High temperatures tomorrow will not hit 96. If you're in Jamestown, you may be lucky Jamestown to hit 90. I've got you at 89, 90 for Crossville, but a smoking hot 97 for Athens, McMinn County, as well as Kingston 95 for Oak Ridge. So it's going to be boiling a little bit. In some cases, 95 for Newport, certainly on the table for your day tomorrow. Let's get to your Captain Accurate Weather Authority forecast. Now, not often do I have the uh, uh, luxury of putting a triple digit number on the seven day, but I had to do it. Uh, I couldn't look away. 97 on Saturday, 99 on Sunday, and then I have us at triple digits. Now, that's a record high, folks, by two degrees. So even if we hit 101 or hit 99, it's still a new record. So record heat on Monday. That's why I put the little exclamation part. You like that? Boom, boom, like, wow, it's, it's 100. Do my eyes deceive me? Is this a misprint? No, it's not 100 on Monday. And Tuesday has the potential to be just right next to it, 99 
maybe 100 on Tuesday, but I left a 20% chance. Some rain could develop, maybe a, a dark cloud comes overhead, and it cools it back to 98. But we'll see. I do think it's much cooler heading into Thursday. Uh, temperatures on Thursday actually should be closer to 89. I believe it should. There's a misprint. 89 on Thursday. I don't know how that got changed, but we'll fix that. Anyway, if you haven't figured this out, the Captain Accurate Weather app is free. It's a great tool to have, whether you're on the go or you're staying put. Pete Michaels Traffic is on there. Keep you and your family safe. Just search Captain Accurate at the App Store and Google Play. Very thankful for you. And know that this is going to be a prolonged heat wave, so make sure that you're mentally prepared as well as physically prepared. Make sure you have water. Cool place to be in the middle of the afternoons that still lie ahead. Well, my name is David Aldridge. Some people call me Captain Accurate. It's not easy being accurate, so weather doesn't surprise you. We'll see you here next time. Take care. <laughs>